factorizing is a bit like cooking in the sense that you can look at a meal and try and find out all the different ingredients that went into that meal. This video is going to look at factorizing with a single bracket. Factorizing a single bracket. If we had an expression such as 4x plus 12 4x plus 12. If you smell that meal, it smells lovely, the 4x plus 12. But what we want to know, what were the ingredients of that meal? What did some mathematician multiply together to get 4x plus 12? If we can find that out, we can factorize or break down into factors this expression. A factor is like an ingredient of the meal. Well, to do that, we look at what they have in common. First, let's focus on the numbers. Can you see a number they have in common that goes into both 4 and 12? I would say 4. 4 goes into 4, and 4 goes into 12. So that's one ingredient. In terms of letters, they have nothing in common. 12 doesn't have any letters, and the 4x has an x. So we found all the ingredients they have in common. That's a 4. That goes outside the brackets. What goes inside the brackets is everything that's left over. 4 times by what gets you to 4x? Remember, a bracket means times by. 4 times by x gets you to 4x. 4 times by what gets you to 12? 4 times by 3 gets you to 12. So what goes inside the brackets is x plus 3. Here's the ingredients. We have a 4 multiplied by an x plus 3. Now we found out how they made that meal of 4x plus 12. Let's look at different meals. How about if we had 6x squared and minus 9x. And we need to break that down into its factors. First, what number do they have in common? Well, not 6, because 6 doesn't go into 9. And not 9, because 9 is too big for 6. How about 3? 3 is the biggest number they both have in common, so that goes outside the brackets. Do they have a letter in common? Yes, they have x. They don't have x squared in common, though, because the 9x only has an x. But they do have an x in common. We found everything that they have in common, so that is what goes outside the brackets. What goes inside the brackets is what you need to multiply 3x by to get your full meal, your full expression. 3 times by 2 is 6, and x times by x is x squared. 3 times by minus 3 gets you to minus 9. Don't forget the minus. And x doesn't need anything to times by to get to x. So there we have it. 3x and then in brackets 2x minus 3. You can always check that it works if you multiply the brackets out again. You don't really uh, need to do that too often but just to show you for this example 3x times by 2x is indeed 6x squared and 3x times by minus 3 just to show you would indeed be minus 9x so we know for sure we've, we've factorized the expression correctly because that's what we started with you don't need to do that step to check only if you really want to double check let's factorize a really long expression into a single bracket how about 10x squared, y squared, and a z minus 25x cubed, and a y and a z? How would we factorize that into a single bracket? Let's do it underneath. First, what number do they have in common? They don't have 10 in common, because 10 doesn't go into 25. 
15, no, 15 doesn't go into either of them. They might have a small number in common. If it had been, for example, 10 and 20, they both would have 2 in common. But we're looking for the biggest possible number they both have in common. The biggest number they both have in common would be 5. Just to quickly make that point even more strongly, see that first example with a 4x plus 12 and the question was factorize fully factorize fully which is usually what the question is if we just done 2 outside because 4 and 12 have 2 in common and then inside would have 2x plus 6 we haven't factorized fully because the what's inside the brackets could be factorized further by taking 2 outside to factorize fully, you need to look at the biggest number and the biggest letter that they have in common, always. The biggest uh, number that 10 and minus 25 have in common is 5. What's the biggest x they have in common? This time it's not just x, because they have something even bigger than that in terms of x they have in common. You can fit x squared inside both of them, so they have x squared in common. The biggest y you can fit? Mm, not y squared this time, because there's a, just a y for the 25, so they have a, just a y in common, and they have a z in common as well. Okay, what do we have to multiply all of that by, which is what they have in common, to get back to our starting expression? 5 times y2 is 10. x squared doesn't need anything to get to x squared. y needs a y inside, so that when you times them together, you get a y squared. Z doesn't need anything to get to a Z. So 2Y is our first bit. 5 times by what gets you to minus 25? Well, 5 times by 5 is 25. So 5 times by minus 5 is minus 25. What does X squared need to become X cubed? X squared needs another X to become X cubed y doesn't need anything to become a y and z doesn't need anything to become a z notice how i'm looking at the expression outside the brackets and then each term of my expression and seeing what is left over or what is needed the y didn't need anything to become a y and the z didn't need anything to become a z so we don't need to write anything inside the brackets and there we have our factorized expression. If in doubt, you can always multiply to see if you get back to your original expression. But what we've done here is seen an introduction to factorizing with a single bracket.